Hi, I'm Mag, and as you might know, I'm trying to become one of the strongest players in enemy defenders. And in my journey, I have gotten a top 10 placement on the hardest activity in the game, which is infinite leaderboards. This is the most prestigious accomplishment you can get in the game currently. And so today I will be giving you some of the knowledge I've got while in this journey by making a tier list of the strongest characters. Also, if you don't believe me for this tier list, I also got another top 10 player to help me with it. Charles just solo the YOLO on YouTube. He also got top 10, so we're... we're Listen, we're both really good at the game. All right, wh what can I say? <laughs> oh yeah, also I forgot to specify that every character that I'm ranking in this tier list, I am assuming they have their best possible single trait. I'm not assuming double traits because that would be unreasonable. <laughs> but if a character best trait is Requiem, I'm gonna assume they have Requiem. If their best trait is Almighty, I'm gonna assume they have Almighty. It's gonna just be a lot easier to rank like that because if I don't, I'm gonna have to put characters in tiers that are gonna be super weird, like Hakari. He would probably be very low on the tier list because he sucks without Almighty, but he's a really great character with Almighty. I just wanna clear that up. If y'all wanna make your own non-trait tier list, the link to the tier maker of this tier list, so you can make your own, is in the description. Feel free to, but this is how I'm gonna make this, so it's very easy to digest. Let's go. All right, so these are the tiers for my tier list here. We got the S tier, the best of the best characters. As support, the best of the best characters there are mainly just for support, but don't really do that much damage. A, very, very good, competent characters. A, support, very good support, but not as good as S. B, characters I would say, they're usable, they're decent, but I wouldn't recommend rolling too much. And C and D are characters I really would not recommend spending any rerolls at all and moving on from them as fast as possible. Any characters that will not be in this tier list, by the way, are because they are so irrelevant and are so, you know, only new players would use this type of unit, like Lava, Lava Admiral and stuff, that I thought I, I shouldn't even bother. But starting with the D tier, we got our boy Sasuke or Thunder God. He really just has really terrible damage. It is what it is. All he does is damage and the damage is terrible. Same can be said for Unstable Asper or Mob. His damage is really, really bad. He is hybrid, but that's that's really all he's going, <laughs> he has going for him. His damage is completely terrible. On the C tier, we got Skull Paladin, which was actually very, very revered and honestly pretty decent in the beginning of the game when he first launched because he has a full AoE on spawn, but... Unfortunately, as time has gone on, we realize he's really not that good, his damage is bad, and, you know, yada yada. Same for Ant King, his damage is just terrible, and that's all he does, it's just damage. Characters that only do damage can't compete with characters that have actual stuff going on, you know? Especially if the damage is not good enough. Now, starting off the B tier, we have the Proficient Sharpshooter. As soon as we got news that flying enemies were gonna be a thing we were so desperate for getting this girl almighty because we're like oh we're gonna need her she's gonna be so relevant unfortunately with really good characters having hybrid she does just doesn't do enough damage does really good damage against flying which is why she's not c or d but that's really about it if not for the fact that she does 1.5 times damage against flying she might even be d tier okay maybe not that much it'd be c next up we got warrior princess another character that people got i, I want to see clickbaited into believing that she's really, really, really good. Her damage is kind of unfortunately bad. And that's all there is to it. Her damage is pretty bad and, you know, what can you do about it? Numbers don't lie. Another character in the same vein is Muscular Sorcerer. I know these two characters, some people are not going to be very happy seeing this low, but I'm going by the numbers and the numbers tell me Muscular Sorcerer, unfortunately, at most is a B tier character. I wish Toji was good. I love Toji. Reality, unfortunately, is disappointing. Another character that has fallen off a bit, Elf Hero. Her AoE damage just isn't enough. At max upgrade, she just can't compete with newer characters. And that's what puts her down. AoEs aren't that good to begin with at max upgrade if they're not on the level of, let's say, Gojo. He's a full AoE, but he does a ton of damage, so you know. <laughs> Elf Hero is a full AoE that just doesn't do enough. I think the same can be said about Garp 
or Prime Commander. He looks nothing like Garp anymore. It's actually embarrassing. He is like the same thing as Elf Hero. I'll say how Elf Hero is a bit better than Garp because she's a three hit on placement, which is actually quite nice. But, you know, it's what it is. Garp is in the same vein where he has a full AoE that's just not enough damage. And to close off the B tier, a character I was very sad to put so low. I'm gonna be honest. I'm very, very surprised he had to be put down this low, but he has fallen off. And that is Sukuna, or Curse King. I think calling him Sukuna is outrageous since he looks nothing like Sukuna. Until, I would say, the last update before Bear King was buffed, Sukuna would have been A tier. But he just isn't there anymore. His DPS just cannot compete with the newer characters. And his only function, which would be to stop uh, healing enemies, is honestly way better done by the Bear King. So Sukuna unfortunately has fallen off, but he's still pretty great. Like I said, the B tier characters are pretty decent, you know? They are very much usable and all that. Will they get you, you know, a placement in the top 100 leaderboards? Unlikely. <laughs> but hey, they're pretty decent. Now for the A supports. We got Ice Mage. I'm pretty sure he was called Clay before. They changed some names. He's a slow that used to be actually very, very good until last season. But now with the debuff nerf, the fact that he attacks very fast doesn't really help him all that much anymore. So he's not as great, but he's still pretty decent. After that, we got... Can I really call this guy Aokiji? He's white now. Aokiji is black. <laughs> Chief of Ice. He is a AoE stun. And he's pretty decent. He honestly could have been S if he just had more range, I think, or attacked faster. Fortunately, there's a character that actually is a better version of him that is an S support. Next up, we got Donut Warrior. Where is he? There he is. Same thing as Clay or Ice Mage. Slows got a bit of a nerf with this last update. And also, Gojo literally exists, <laughs> which is a full AoE slow. But if you don't have Gojo, is a good option for slow. And finally, a character that actually, surprisingly, has fallen from S to A. Bulma. Bloomer. There is a new arming character that is better than Bulma, so Bulma has lost her place. She's still pretty good until you get this new farm. You can keep using her, but yeah. There's a better farm, so it is what it is. Now starting the A tier. Like I said, A characters are very, very good. They aren't in the top tier. The top tier I pretty much reserve for characters that will get the greatest and most vast use in the game. But starting with the A tier, the Water Grandmaster. He has very great DPS. You can get it from the raid right now. What doesn't get him in S tier is that the S tier characters, generally speaking, don't just do really good damage. They also get got more stuff going on. And he just does good damage. Next, we got this new character that came out this update, Fire De Demon Ninja. He is essentially a similar character to Natsu, which I, I, I might as well also say that he's right next to him. Him and Natsu are very, very similar. They're burn characters and they're both very, very strong. They don't get to the next level. They're not S tier, but they're very great. And then after that, honestly, a character that you could, could make an argument for S tier, but I would say no, is the Bear King. Again, phenomenal full AoE DPS with the bleed, and it stops those healing characters, which could potentially land him in S support, but the way I see it, he is mainly there for also DPS because healing bosses are here and there they're not all too common so i thought the a tier would be a better placement for him than just put him in support but yeah very great character and he's a four placement so you don't need almighty which i think gives some points again i'm always considering every character in this list has the best trait possible so characters like hakari if i was to assume hakari was to have brawler one and not almighty honestly i would put him on c tier but with almighty you know, different story. Next, we have a character that's probably going to surpri surprise a lot of people because he was kind of really hated on, the Monster Sorcerer. I would say, personally, he is on the cusp of going down to B tier, but his damage is quite good. Again, another character you don't need Almighty on, and his damage is good enough that he got the placement on A tier. But yeah, if you told me you think he's uh, on B tier, I wouldn't, I wouldn't argue with you. He's on that cusp. Maybe I should have put a B plus tier and an A plus tier, but I thought it would be too much. And to finalize the A tier, our first secret of the list, Slime 
Spirit Queen. Newest leaderboard character, very prestigious award, like I said. That's, that's I, I got her shiny because I got the top 10. Unfortunately, I'm not the greatest unit. Very good unit, actually. I think it got very hated on. Again, I assume characters are going to have their best possible traits, and for this character, it needs Almighty. It's a one-placement character. Without Almighty, this character is a D tier. <laughs> but assuming best possible trait, A tier for sure. Now we're starting to get crazy. The S tier supports, and then after the S tiers. New character, Legion Veteran, goes on S support. These exclusive characters, the, the, the pay to win banner characters, the wish characters, are all very, very good, as they should be because they are paid only as of the time I'm recording. I'm assuming they're gonna change that, whatever. Veteran is a range buffer and does more stuff, but it's a great support, so lands on the S tier. The Assassin goes right next to it. He buffs crit chance. So again, like the, these supports are pretty crazy. All the exclusive characters actually are major supports. And right next to them, a new character from this update, the Pink Demon Mage. She is the farm character ha that has replaced Bulma. Phenomenal farm character. It's a bit of a weird one where the ability sucks the soul out of the mobs and then gives you money. So you gotta play around that. But honestly, you can play that just fine. You can just, you know, you put it in front of the spawn and then you should keep sucking them and stunning them. She doesn't just suck their souls, she also stuns them. So great support. And right next to her, the pink rock star herself. You already know what she does. She's a buffer that also makes money. It seems like right now, what they've done is pink rock stars can't stack buff anymore. She used to be able to stack. So if you had four pink rock stars, all the buffs could stack on the end, on the units around. So they would go up to what, 80% damage increase? It seems like they fixed that and now she can. So not everyone's gonna have to run a pink rock star on, you know, a raid or whatever. So more people can run pink demon mage and you can have the stun and the buff. Should be good. Next up, also from this update, the Ice Dragon Queen, which is essentially the better version of the Chief of Ice. Chief of, ah, Chief of Ice. Full AoE stun, but also before the max upgrade, which is the AoE, she does a cone as well with, I believe, perfect SPA. So very fantastic stun character. Definitely, definitely go for it. And to finish it off, also another character that could be brought down, I think, because of the changes that were just made, but it's Yuji or Cursed Fighter. He increases damage the enemies take by 15%, which also, for those that don't know, stacks with Egress's debuff. They look the same on top of the enemy, but they actually stack. Egress's is 5% and Yuji's is 15. Now, they have done changes to debuffs, which leads a lot of people to believe that Yuji is actually not gonna be as good, so maybe we have to test more further, he might be brought down to A. But for the time being, for all we know, he's still an ass support, very, very great character. Lots of really good supports, and four out of the six on S support are from this update, crazy. Now the big boys, S tier. Starting with the GOAT Gojo, super, super, super incredibly high DPS with full ginormous AoE and slow. He's just actually overpowered. I don't know why they release him like that, where he has insane range, insane damage and slow, but you know, it is what it is. Next is a character that could go down to A. And if you told me you think so, I wouldn't argue with you, but I felt like he still deserves to be an S for now. But honestly, he's on his way down, which is Hakari. The reason for that is because his damage is at the lower end of this tier here. Out of all the S tier characters, I believe he has the worst damage. Or at the very least, the secret. Out of the secrets and the new Shadow Dragon, which spoilers is S tier, he has the lowest damage. And he has no utility. All he does is damage. And unfortunately, it's not the highest of damages anymore. So he might be getting down, maybe next tier list, he's gonna be A tier. But for now, I felt like I wanna keep him on S because he's still pretty good and his damage is still very good. Next up is Egress, fantastic, full AoE damage increaser like we talked about with Yuji, they stack. His nuke is also super good. On leaderboard runs, what we do is before a boss, we all stop his auto nuke and make sure that the nuke is set to strongest and goes through the boss because the damage is very substantial and adds up very quickly. So this character is not falling off anytime soon. Next, 
Sun Jin Woo, or the pro gamer. His summons are very, very, very useful. Like I said, unlike Hakari, these characters have so much utility to them, it's crazy. It is very sad that Hakari has no special thing about him. No ability, no debuff, he just does damage. Because look, like Sun Jin Woo has summons which are very powerful, mind you. They are game-changing for leaderboard runs. Igris got a nuke and a damage increase, Gojo slows, and has a way higher DPS as well than Hakari. It's sad. Now, the, de the new Demon King is also a bit of a question mark, I'm gonna be honest. But his damage is very good. He's a 4 placement, so you don't need Almighty to get his best damage. So if you if you still want to get top 100, right? If you still want to get top 100, but it's really hard for you to get Almighty because you just don't have the time to put in for trading, to get so many rerolls. If you roll a Sonic or Requiem, he's still a very, very great character, which is quite nice, right? And now, this character might be also one to, I'm gonna need to do some explaining, the Legion Commander. Now, this character has a very strong nuke. She's also a hill, so she does more damage to the flying, which could be very useful for specific maps. Personally, doing runs on the snow map, which should be on the leaderboard soon, I found that the flying enemies are incredibly hard to kill. So she could be a very great solution for that. And she does summons, which are way more consistent than Sun Jin Woo because his summons have RNG to it. He actually has a chance of summoning when he kills, depending on the wave. I'm not gonna take time to explain because the, that mechanic is so convoluted. <laughs> but her summons are also very good. She's just a generally very, very great character. And she's not that hard to get. You can get her by, you know, buying her in the trading plaza somewhat easily. But she is quite exclusive. She's from the pay to win banner. She's from the paid only banner. So. Although she's very great, unfortunately she's not as accessible as other characters. Talking about not very accessible, Shadow Dragon, which I have no gameplay because I don't have this character specifically, so uh, shouts to whoever I'm gonna have to steal gameplay from. I'm gonna ask first, okay? I'm not stealing. I'm, I'm gonna ask first if I can use their gameplay to put on screen right now. Shadow Dragon is unbelievably OP. He has insane damage and he buffs range by 25% and buffs SPA or the attack cooldown by 15% effectively increasing your damage because you're attacking faster, right? This character is absurd. He is the most OP character in the game and it sucks that he is by far and away the hardest character to get because it's a paid only banner. It costs 10,000 Robux per five multis. He's a 0.1% chance. So the realistically, unless you get extremely lucky and get one free wish from the new game mode, which is impossible because the 1% chance of getting one wish and you somehow do a single summon and get him, you're never going to get this character from the banner. You're probably going to have to trade for him and trading for him is going to be impossible. <laughs> so. He's the most OP character in the game, but also incredibly difficult to get. But this is the tier list. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'm going to leave a, a link for the template of this tier list in the description. If you guys also want to make your own, share with your friends, whatever. And I'm also going to leave a screenshot of the tier list in the description if you just want to save for a future reference, whatever. Or if you want to take a screenshot of the video, I just <laughs> make that goofy ass smile. And uh, that's about it. Let me know what you guys think. Thanks, thanks for watching. Yeah.